This here is the Voron printer that I've had in my studio here for, I guess, almost a year now. I built it about a year ago from a kit that I bought. And the main reason for wanting to buy and build one of those kits was that I figured it would force me to learn a whole lot about how these printers work from a mechanical point of view, from electronics point of view, software and configuration, that whole thing. And in that sense, it's been a great success. I've learned a ton about Voron printers, about Core XY printers in general, and I've tweaked and tuned this thing and I've gotten it printing, I think at a really, really high quality level, something I'm super happy with. And I've used it on a bunch of projects. Some of them you've seen here on videos on the channel. Um, there have been a whole lot more other projects as well that I did not record video of. And like I said, I'm super happy with this thing and how it prints. Here's the problem I have with it though. Um, I've heard it said in the Voron community that you don't just build a Voron printer, you build your Voron printer because everybody's printer is a little bit different, customized. There's lots of different options and things you can do to these things. And you know, it's good to make your, your own version, right? The one that you would really wanna have and, and use depending on your use case and what you're using it for. And while this printer works really well, um, when I look at it, I, I see the printer that the kit prescribed for me to build, the kit that I bought, um, not necessarily my printer, right? There's a lot of things that I would do differently or that I would like to change or upgrade about this printer. And to be fair, a year ago when I bought that kit, I didn't know any of that, right? I didn't know enough to know all the options that were available to me. And so I'm glad to have bought and built that kit. I don't think that there would have been a way for me to do what I want to do now, which is to turn this thing into my Voron printer. I, I didn't know enough back then to be able to do that. So I'm glad to have gone through the process of building the kit and you know, building everything that it prescribed for me to build and then learning about all the other things that are available to me. And so over the last two or three months, I've been putting together this list of all of the things that I would like to change or modify or upgrade about this printer. And as I've gone through that list and tried to figure out a good order to, to do those upgrades in that would minimize the amount of downtime for the printer and all that kind of stuff, what I've come to realize is that by the end of the process, if I do everything on my list, I would have taken pretty much everything apart on this printer except for probably the frame and most of the electronics compartment down below. Just about everything else will be touched as far as being disassembled and reassembled in the process of doing all the upgrades that I have in mind. And so I've decided, it's a little bit scary, but rather than doing the upgrades one at a time, I've decided to just take this thing apart pretty much down to its bones and then rebuild it using a lot of the same hardware um, because all of that's fine, all the same motors and belts and everything as well, um, but making all the other modifications along the way that I have in mind on my list. And then when we're finished, it'll be basically a brand new printer. At least it'll look completely different from how it looks now, and it will have all of the features and everything that I'd like to have in my Voron printer that will be mine here in my studio, and I'll, I'll keep using that for projects going forward. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. I have printed out all of the parts that need to be printed out for the rebuild and for all the mods that I want to do. Um, it's really important that I've done that and I've actually double and triple checked that list to make sure that, I, and I'm quite sure at this point, that I have everything that I need, that all those parts are good quality, that I'm not gonna need to reprint or that I'm not missing any parts because as soon as I start taking this thing apart, it's the only printer that I have that would be capable of printing the parts that it also needs for its rebuild. And so, yeah, if we find out part way along the, along the way that I'm missing a part or whatever, that would be a, a very bad day. So uh, I'm pretty confident, like I said, that we're good to go. I've got all those parts all sorted out by section of the printer and, and ready for the rebuild. Um, but I'm gonna need to disassemble each section so that I can get at all the hardware that I need to put those new sections together. And so we're gonna start that process today. Uh, I think we're gonna start with the Stealth Burner tool head. Uh, I'll disassemble that to grab the things that I need out of it. And then we're gonna build a new thing uh, with a new extruder and then a few other new new bits as well um, and then using some of the existing pieces that are in there uh, in that stealth burner and so that'll be the first step here and then we'll go on from there to do some gantry work and the z drives and a whole bunch of other stuff i don't know how many videos are going to be in this series but i will create a playlist here on the youtube channel so that you can keep track of everything as we go through uh, i'm not going to list all the changes right now either because um there's a lot of them, so we'll let those be surprises as we go. But uh, yeah, today it's gonna be the stealth burner, and uh, let me get this thing taken off of this printer, and then we'll jump over to the build desk, and I'll show you what we have in mind for the changes there. Disassembly is really straightforward here. 
I'm just removing the stealth burner faceplate, disconnecting all the wiring, and then removing the hot end and the extruder. The exciting part here for me is that I know I'm not going to be reattaching this annoying cable chain. Here's a quick look at the disassembly of the old stealth burner. I'm going to leave the old extruder intact and save it to use as a backup in case I ever have issues with the brand new Galileo 2 extruder that I'll be building. I'll be reusing the fans, LEDs, and the E3D Revo hot end, but the colors of all the printed parts are changing, so I'm removing all those components and will reassemble them with the new printed parts later on. All right, moving over to the build desk, I've laid out all the parts that I'll need to build this new Galileo 2 extruder. If you were watching closely, you might have noticed that the extruder I removed from the old printer was already a Galileo 2. I'd upgraded that one a couple months ago from the standard clockwork extruder, but I decided to buy a second Galileo 2 kit this time and build it again. This is a newer version of the kit, so it comes with improved injection molded gears for the planetary gearbox and a couple other small improvements. As with most Voron builds, we'll start here with heat set inserts. The manual for the Galileo 2 is really well written and easy to follow, so if you're familiar with Voron build guides, you shouldn't have any problems following this one. I'll be following the build guide without any modifications until the very end where I'll install a slightly modified door and strain relief that are compatible with the CAN bus board that I'm going to be using. The planetary gearbox gets assembled next, and this is using those improved gears. The older version of this kit came with 3D printed gears, they needed a good cleaning before assembly to ensure that you didn't end up with dust and debris inside the gearbox. These newer gears are super clean right out of the box and they spin really nicely. I still followed the build guide's suggestion to exercise the gears a bit using a drill, even though I imagine that's probably not necessary with these cleaner gears. And then after that, it's time to add some PTFE lube inside the gearbox and seal it all up. So why upgrade to the Galileo 2? Well, my experience with the original Clockwork 2 extruder that came in my Voron kit wasn't that great. I had a lot of inconsistent extrusion issues that affected print quality. Maybe I just assembled the Clockwork extruder badly, but I've been a lot happier since upgrading to the Galileo 2, so I wanted to keep using that in this new version of the printer. Next, I'll attach the drive gear, making sure to follow the guide's instructions regarding placement and spacing on its carrier shaft and then the gearbox and motor assembly can be attached into the main body of the extruder. And we're almost done, but here are those custom parts that I mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna be installing a Big Tree Tech EBB2209 CAN bus board on this stealth burner, and I've printed the modified side cover and strain relief that are compatible with that board, so I'm installing those now. I'll have to remove them in a bit to actually install the electronics, but for now we can at least see how the completed extruder is gonna look. Now I'll reassemble the hot end. This isn't any different from the Voron Revo hot end that I was using in the original version of the printer, so we'll speed through this assembly pretty quickly. The only change here is that the new printed parts are in this nice dark blue color. I haven't talked much about the color change yet, but it's going to coincide with a name change for the printer. I had named that original version of the printer Voron Unit 1 because its purple and green color scheme was inspired by the Evangelion Ava Unit 1. This new version of the printer is going to be named Voron Unit 6, and it'll have a blue, gold, and gray color scheme inspired by AVA Unit 6, which happens to be my favorite of the AVA color schemes. I'll have to find an AVA Unit 6 model kit to build and display next to the finished printer. As I'm completing the hot end, I'll use this handy printed guide from the Galileo 2 to ensure that the PTFE tubing will be the correct length to fit into the extruder. Let's move on to the Stealth Burner faceplate. I printed two different versions of this faceplate and you can see both of them here. I decided I like the blue one with the gold chevron markings better, so that's the one I'm gonna use. As usual, when working with one of these faceplates, I find the most challenging part to be just organizing all the wires, making sure they're run through the proper channels and not getting in the way of things. I'm also installing a Big Tree Tech Nomi, which is this small round display that shows printer status and little animations while the printer's running. It's basically just a fun toy, and I realize that this adds a little bit of unneeded weight to the tool head, so if I decide later on that it's affecting print speed or quality, I'll just remove it. It connects to the printer via Wi-Fi using this adhesive-backed antenna, so we don't need to connect any extra wires to it except for just power, which can come from the CAN bus breakout board that you see me installing here. That board has DuPont connectors for both of the fans and the LEDs as well, so I'll just cut all those cables to correct length and then crimp on the new connectors.
With the individual components for the tool head all built, I'm going to continue with the disassembly of the printer while we talk about where we are in the build and what's next. I'll be assembling the new tool head and connecting up the new CAN bus wiring when I'm ready to attach the tool head to the gantry, but before I can do that, I have to remove the old gantry and assemble the new one. It's getting late, so my plan is to work on the gantry tomorrow, and that'll be in the next video. Thanks for joining me for the Big Voron Unit 6 rebuild. Be sure to get subscribed to the channel so you won't miss the rest of this project, and if you have any questions about the build, let me know down in the comments. I'll include links to all the components and mods that I've covered in this episode down in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.